In order to understand amino acid titrations, we must understand what is happening in a titration and the ionization of our amino acid. In this example, we are using valine. Valine is a nonpolar, aliphatic, hydrophobic amino acid. Valine has an R group that is non-ionizable. So in this example, we are only dealing with two pKa values, the pKa of this carboxylic ionizable group and the pKa of this amino group that is also ionizable. The pKa of this amino group is 9.6 and the pKa of this carboxylic group is 2.2. Now let's say we add this valine into a solution that has a pH of 0.5. Now if the pH is 0.5, what will be the protonation or deprotonation of valine? So at a pH of 0.5, we are below both of these pKa values. And if we are below the pKa value, that means we are below the value which will lead to the dissociation of the proton. Okay, this 2.2 reflects the pKa, the dissociation of that hydrogen from this carboxylic group. If we have not reached this pH value, the proton will not deprotonate. So we will see that carboxyl group will be protonated. Our amino group will also be protonated because we have not reached that 9.6 value yet. Now what's going to happen if I slowly increase my pH? I increase my pH until I surpass 2.2. Well if I've surpassed 2.2, I've surpassed the dissociation uh, ability of this carboxylic group and it will lose its hydrogen. So now I will have a C minus R group. So we can see that there's a small mistake over here. It should be NH3 plus. So we can see over here that we've lost our hydrogen. Now, if we were to label this in terms of HA and A minus, we would say that this is our HA and this is our A minus because here we have that proton, here we are losing that proton. And we know that the protonated form is going to be our acid, and this non protonated form is going to be our conjugate base. Okay. But I still have the extra hydrogen on the amino group. Well, let's say I continue to increase my pH and I surpass 9.6. Well, I've surpassed surpassed the the dissociative ability of the amino group so once i surpass the ph of 9.6 this extra proton will deprotonate and now i will have c i still have that co minus it was deprotonated earlier and now i will have nh2 now if we were to take a look at so if we label this form A, this is form B, and this is form C. If we're comparing form A and B, we would say this is the acid, this is the base, because here we are losing the proton, so this must be the acid. If we are comparing B and C, we would say that the B is the acid, because here that amino group is losing that hydrogen, so this must be the conjugate base. So essentially, there are two separate reactions. There are two separate steps occurring. This is the first one that's going to occur if we are adding in base into our solution. What's important to note in this example is that we are starting off at a very acidic low pH and we are increasing our pH. And since we are increasing our pH, that means we're adding base into the solution. And if we're adding base into the solution, we're moving in this direction. If we were adding acid into the solution, we would be moving in the opposite direction because things would become, become protonated. Right now we are deprotonating. So here we can see uh, now the overall charges as well. In form A, the overall charge is plus one. 
because we only have this charge over here. In form B, we have a positive and a negative, so overall our charge is zero. And in form C, we only have our negative charge, so in form C, the charge is negative one. Now, some important things to also make note of is that when our pKa, so when our pKa equals our pH, when our pKa equals our pH, our concentration of co our weak, weak acid and conjugate base will be equal. So when we are at, when the pH is equal to the pKa, our two forms will be in equilibrium with one another. Same for here. Now this is just understanding the loss of protons as we increase our pH. Another aspect to make note of is where we have our Zwitter ion. So remember that here we have 2.2, pKa, 9.6, and we write these in ascending order. Here we had a charge of plus 1, 0, uh, negative 1. So here, between A and B, we see we have this 0 charge. And remember that Zwitter ion is when we have an overall charge of 0. So in order to calculate our pi, we would say 2.2 plus 9.6 because our pi is the average of our two pKa values uh, at that zero point. And at that zero point, we see 2.2 and 9.6. There are no other pKa values. So our pi is 5.9. So at a pH of 5.9, we will see valine exists as a Zwitter ion. So now we've identified three main aspects. We've identified the two pKa reactions occurring, and we've identified our pI. And all three of these uh, points will be plotted onto our titration graph for an amino acid. So if I plot my points and I label the x-axis as my volume, of NaOH, and here I label my pH values, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now, I'm starting off at a pH of 0 0.5, so I'll put that over here. And at that point, I haven't added any NaOH. I know that at some point, I will reach a pH, my pKa value of 2.2. And I will also reach a point uh, at some point where I will be at 9.6 because that is my other pKa value. Now when I'm drawing it out, my curve is going to look something like this. Now when I draw this curve, there's three important regions we should be looking at. There's uh, this region over here, this region over here, and this point over here. This point over here represents our PI, and these two points represent the point at which our pKa equals our pH, therefore two forms are in equilibrium with one another. Remember we discussed that when our pKH is equal to pKa, we'll have two forms in equilibrium with one another. So A will be in equilibrium with B. Now same goes in that other location. Here our pKa is equal to our pH. So form B will be equal to form C. They will be in equilibrium with one another. We also refer to these two regions as our buffering regions, and we'll see why in a second. So this region is our buffering region, this point is our buffering region. Now in order to understand buffering, we have to understand equilibrium. So when pKa equals pH and we have two forms in equilibrium with one another, remember that one form represents acid, one form represents base. So one of them is donating, 
protons, the other will be accepting protons. So if there's equal amounts of both, that means that as soon as one donates a proton, the other will accept it. So they are actively neutralizing one another. So this flat zone over here, this it's only short range, but this flat zone expresses a control of pH. So your pH is not being changed over this area. And for this, we have to remember what buffers are. So buffers, a good buffer is able to restrict change in pH within plus or minus one of our pH. So if the pH, if our pKa is 2.2, we have our buffer region will occur between 1.2 and 3.2 and we see this right over here because when we have the both forms in equilibrium they're actively neutralizing one another they're acting as buffers same thing over here we have two forms in equilibrium one is the acid one is the base they are actively neutralizing one another and over the range of plus or minus uh plus or minus one ph they will be neutralizing one another so over here since we have a pka of 9.6 the buffering region will be from 8.6 to 10.6 and we see that over here so to summarize, we have labeled three distinct regions in our amino acid titration. The buffering region, because we have two pKa values, we have two reactions happening, two separate buffering regions, and our pI, which reflects the point at which the overall charge of our uh, amino acid is zero. So once again, in this example, we started off as a, at a pH of 0 0.5, which was very acidic, and we added NaOH uh, which is a strong base and over time as we increased the pH of the solution the hydrogens on our two ionizable groups dissociated and when the pH is within plus or minus one of our pKa, val pKa value we see a buffering region and that is amino acid titration this was a very simple titration because we only had two ionizable groups if we have more than two ionizable groups, we're gonna have more buffering regions. So make note of that when you are drawing your amino acid titrations. If, you're, if you have a peptide tit tit titration where you have more than one amino acid, you may see multiple buffering regions as well. And that is amino acid titrations. Three things to always remember. Always draw out your buffering regions, know your pKa values, know when your pKa equals pH, know when your two forms exist in equilibrium, and know the point at which you have your Zwitter ion.